Good evening. Please take a moment to distribute the worship aids in your pews. The entrance antiphon may be found on the front page of the worship aid. Name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining in this beautiful liturgy uh, this Holy Thursday. We begin the sacred Trudum, our, our sacred few days uh, where we turn our fuller attention to the Lord huh? and, uh, and participate in these beautiful events of these days. So thank you for joining. As we begin this Eucharist, as always, let us pause and call to mind our sins, ask the Lord to pardon our offenses against Him and one another so that we may worthily participate. I confess to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask us to marry virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and, share, and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the lamb, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, 
no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, brothers and sisters. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, St. John's account of the Last Supper tells us that as they gathered for the meal, Jesus knew that his hour had come. He knew it was time for him to pass from this world. And he also knew that the, de the devil had already induced Judas to turn him over. But it is, in, it is in such an awful moment as this that Jesus, in turn, gives us the sacrament of hope, the Eucharist, so that he could stay with us always. St. Paul tells us in our second reading, this is my body that is for you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. Also at this meal, Jesus instituted the holy priesthood so that the Eucharistic sacrifice could be perpetuated until he returns in glory. And finally, Jesus calls us all to serve, to serve one another. Today is certainly a special day in our church as we celebrate Holy Thursday. It's certainly one of my favorite masses of the year. I love the Eucharistic procession at the end also. 
The Eucharist is so important to us, and at every Mass, as we will shortly hear, what we do is recall the passion of Christ. Right on the altar, huh? As an unbloody sacrifice. We will enter anew into the very means of our salvation. Hence St. Paul's words, when you eat and drink, you proclaim the death of the Lord. We recall at every Eucharist, our salvation, Jesus' offering of himself and his resurrection. When the eternal word of God, the second person of the Trinity, came to earth, Jesus himself stoops down to us, and by his death, birth, death, and resurrection, he wins salvation for all people for all times. As part of his enduring love, of course, he gives us the Eucharist at the Last Supper, not wanting to leave us alone in the world, but wanting to remain with us. He didn't have to do that. His sal as salvation was already won for all people for all times by his death and resurrection. But he wanted to have a continuing presence with us. He wanted to have a continuing intimate relationship with each of us in an abundant way. Hence, Jesus leaves his Eucharistic presence. We know Jesus builds on the Old Testament theme of covenant in the Eucharist. He ratifies, he raises up the bloody sacrifice. We heard about one of those sacrifices in our first reading today from the Old Testament, the Passover, when the lamb's blood was taken after it was sacrificed and put over the doorposts and lentils. God would pass over those homes sprinkled with this blood so that destruction would not come to them that night. We know that in Old Testament times, they took blood from the animal sacrifices that they would perform, and then it would be sprinkled on the gathered assembly, on the people, and on the altar. The animal's blood was believed to be that which gave the animal life. They didn't have modern science, huh? Biology as we know. And they thought that as the blood of the animal ebbed out of the, out of the animal, that life itself was coming out of the animal. So they associated the blood with life. So when Jesus dies on the cross and he's poked with the spear, with the spear by the guard, we're told that blood and water flowed from his side. Jesus now pours out his own blood to redeem us to atone for our sins once and for all. We believe that Jesus' very life is poured out of him on the cross, which is the life, of course, of God himself. Therefore, it's able to reconcile us to the Father, taking away our sins. With his resurrection, Jesus, because he's both God and man, huh? Jesus is the second person of the Trinity, huh? He's God, but he's also a human born of woman like you and me. And because he's God and man, when he dies and he goes back to the Father, he's able to do that because he's the second person of the Trinity, huh? He's God, so he's able to go back to heaven. And because he's a person, a human, he's the first person to go to heaven. No one was justified to go to heaven before that, huh? since original sin, since sin entered the world. And so he goes to heaven and he opens the gates of paradise, huh? He opens the gates of paradise, not just for himself, but for you and me, for all of our beloved dead to follow him. Jesus' death and resurrection is the very foundation of our Christian life. Every week, every day, that's why we celebrate the Eucharist on the altar, to recall and actually participate in that pouring out of Jesus' love for us on Calvary. We represent the Calvary scene when we celebrate the Eucharist. 
It's the most followed commandment that Jesus gave us. Do this in memory of me. And so we do, huh? Do this in memory of me. In baptism, each one of us was incorporated into the body and blood of Christ. We became members of the church, his body. In the Eucharist, we're transformed. We're changed by the Eucharist. It's almost just like any relationship we have with any other person, huh? The more we see them, the more we can be changed by them, huh? And the same is true with our Lord, and especially by the Eucharist. The more that we're able to participate in it, the more we're able to receive him, we believe we become more like him, huh? That our hearts become more like his sacred heart, beating in love for others. We believe that as we receive the Eucharist, the Eucharist builds us up in grace and virtue. We don't just receive something that reminds us of Jesus or what he did so long ago, but we receive him, huh? Body, blood, soul, and divinity. We are strengthened to be him in the world, huh? The Eucharist strengthens us for our mission. So when we leave church, when we leave our communion with him, filled with that communion, we can't help but share it with others, huh? his love, his mercy. We can't help to call others into communion with him. Our families, our friends, our schoolmates, on the sports field, wherever we are, our workplace. We are to bring Christ, whom we have received, with us to others. So it's a good day, Holy Thursday, for us to think about and pray over our own devotion to the Eucharist. We have to be so careful, huh? Because the Eucharist can become rote. We can get used to it, huh? Just like we do the people that we love that we're around all the time. We just presume that they're always there. So we can't let complacency ever slip into our relationship with Christ, especially in the Eucharist. How do we reverence Jesus in the Eucharist? How do we prepare ourselves to receive him in the Eucharist? What kind of act of thanksgiving do we make? How do we reverence them when we come into a church? As you know, the bishops of the United States have started a Eucharistic revival for this year, a chance uh, to renew the church by enkindling a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. And what a good goal for all of us, huh? That could be the goal of every Holy Thursday. And that's why you're here today, because of your love of Jesus in the Eucharist. We're going to be blessed here at the cathedral. It might have been in your bolts, and I'm not sure. But there's going to be four Eucharistic processions as part of the, the celebration. And they're going to be coming from different sections of the country. And it's going to take them a couple months to get there. It's going to be a walking pilgrimage. And they've got a group of people that are going to accompany the Blessed Sacrament. And one of the routes comes from New England and goes, they all end up in Indianapolis where the Eucharistic Congress is gonna be. And on Memorial Day, it's gonna arrive here on the procession and be in our cathedral. So we're blessed, we're gonna have it for three days in our diocese, but it's gonna start here at the cathedral. So Memorial Day evening, it's not the best time, but that's what we got, huh? And our love of the Lord will compel us huh, to honor him there. So you'll hear more about that, but it'll be an opportunity for all of us, huh? It'll be a way to participate in the revival going on throughout our country. So the Eucharist is the lifeblood of our church. That means it's the lifeblood of each of us as Christians, as Catholics. So I certainly wanna thank you. I wanna thank you while I'm here for your love and devotion of Jesus in the Eucharist. It's so inspiring to me, huh? I love to come and pray with you and to celebrate the Eucharist here with you because I love your love of the Eucharist too, huh? So thank you for your perseverance and love for the Eucharist. Thank you for sharing Jesus and the Eucharist with others when you leave here too, the work of evangelization, which we're all called to. It's hard, it's challenging sometimes, but it's our privilege and it's our responsibility as Jesus' disciples of 2024 here in Metuchen or Edison, wherever we live. Huh? 
If we don't do it, who will do it? In Jesus' name in our day. And that's how we renew the face of the earth. Our world, our country, our church is going to only get better by what we're doing now, huh? By doing this and then sharing what we receive here with others. So I thank you. I thank you for your love of the Eucharist and the love of the church. I'm so grateful for you. I love you for it. I pray for you each day, and I'm grateful for you, as I said. So may this Eucharist nourish us, huh? May this celebration of Holy Thursday enliven in us our love for Jesus in the Eucharist. And let us each look. What more can I do to honor Jesus in the Eucharist in my life? How more can I recognize what a gift he is to us? So I never, ever let any complacency creep into my relationship with him. God bless you all. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and forever. Dominus acena, 
At the Last Supper, our Savior entrusted to his church the memorial of his death and resurrection to be celebrated forever. Let us pray. For our Holy Father, our bishops and priests, whose ordination was instituted at the Last Supper, that their consecrated lives of priestly service may continue to flow from the Eucharist, which they offer in the person of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, that the blood of the divine Lamb may keep the destructive flow of war and oppression from us, and that each of us may be ready for the journey that justice will demand of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, in every capacity of loving service that we give to each other, that our Lord's humility and self-emptying, symbolized in the foot washing, may continue in our mutual reverence and devotion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who are far from the sacraments, for the sick and addicted, the lonely and the poor, that this night of love and suffering may draw them into communion with Jesus, who has the remedy for their wounds. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who share in this Eucharist, remembering most vividly that hour when Jesus showed us the very depths of his love, that we might express our gratitude to him by being faithful in all that he asks of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed loved ones who ate the divine bread and drank the holy cup and proclaimed the death of the Lord while on earth, that they may now share his victory over death in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the petitions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, for your glory and our salvation, you appointed Jesus Christ, eternal high priest, May the people he gained for you by the sacrifice of his body and blood come to share in the power of his cross and resurrection. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Holy Thursday collection, which benefits our social concerns ministry, will be taken at this time. Thank you for your continued support and generosity.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink the blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Clemisus Geni et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, his spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Laurus, Chrysogenus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may defend it by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect make it spiritual and acceptable, so they may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, 
he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servant and your holy servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners and hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through, it, through, it, that, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven,
us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Thank you for your prayerful presence tonight. As soon as uh, we have the procession of the Blessed Sacrament uh, around the cathedral tonight, the Holy Eucharist will remain here on this, uh, this, this side altar until midnight. And it's the uh, church's instinct to keep vigil with the Lord as he enters into his passion as he goes to the garden. So I encourage you to stay uh, as much as you can tonight. We will have uh, night prayer uh, at 11.55, and then we'll close at midnight tonight. Tomorrow morning we have um, morning prayer at nine o'clock. We'll be celebrating Tre Ore, uh, beginning at noon, uh, those uh, seven last words of Jesus, uh, which will go until about 2.30, and then at three o'clock will be uh, the solemn celebration of the Lord's Passion. Again, thanks so much for your presence, and we look forward to continue to pray with you.